Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and today we've got another video from my folder titled Things I Talk to Customers a Lot About. The subject for today is how single point threading of inch threads differs from that process in metric thread pitches. You might have only done one or the other, and there are a few places where you can get tripped up if you're not familiar with both techniques. I've got our workhorse 1440 GT ready to go, so let's get started. I raided the scrap bin once again and found this nicely proportioned stick of mystery steel. Now mystery steel is often the first material someone will learn on at the lathe, but unfortunately most feed speed calculators want you to enter a specific alloy and not just steel I found in the scrap bin. For the price of free, it's hard to beat, and it'll do for demonstration purposes. We've got our machinist nail polish again this week, so we can clearly see where our scratch pass is. I like applying it to turned parts while the part's spinning in the chuck. Just remember to keep your hands clear of the chuck and choose the lowest spindle speed, unless you want the shirt you're wearing to get that cool splatter graphic effect from the 90s. This is a general video that's not meant to cover every machine we sell, so suffice to say that you need to look at your threading chart, find the thread you're trying to cut, and put the machine into whatever condition that's meant to cut that thread. Check your manual or call us for more details on that. We'll start with an SAE thread since all the machines we sell have true inch lead screws. I'll also note that this is a video on the operation of the machine only and isn't meant to be an exhaustive source on how to thread. I figure there are enough videos on how to set your compound angle or how to use the three wire method, so we'll skip that. In this video, we're concentrating on how to get your lathe to cut in the same groove every time. Once you get familiar with the machine, then you can worry about some of the finer points of threading, like tool selection or surface finish. Of course, check the thread pitch right after the scratch pass. No use in cutting a beautiful thread if you find out at the end that you cut the wrong thread pitch. Not that that's ever happened to me. When you're cutting inch threads, to get back to the beginning for subsequent passes, you can back the cross slide off, disengage the half nut, crank the carriage back to the start, and then use the threading dial to re-engage the half nut in the correct groove. It's worth mentioning how the threading dial works. There's a gear on the back of the dial that interfaces with the lead screw, so the dial rotates anytime the carriage is disengaged from the lead screw. The numbers you can re-engage on is going to depend on the thread pitch that you're cutting, and how that's calculated could be a video in and of itself, so you can check the manual or call us if you're still confused. When you re-engage, that threading dial stops until you disengage the half nut again to reposition for the next pass. So that's inch threads in a nutshell, but let's say we need to cut some metric threads. The first thing I always do before I take the side cover off is to hit the e-stop to cut the power to the machine. That red switch at the top right corner is also a kill switch that shouldn't allow the machine to run while the cover is off, but my fingers are soft and squishy compared to these gears, so I like at least two switches keeping this lathe inert while I'm poking around in this potential meat grinder. The part at issue here is the transposition gear set. That is a 120 tooth gear paired with a 127 tooth gear, which allows us to cut metric threads on an inch lead screw. When you're cutting inch threads, you leave the top and bottom gears both engaged with the same 127 tooth gear, making it a simple idler gear. But when you want to cut metric threads, the top goes to the 127 and the bottom mates with the 120. It varies from machine to machine, but on this one and on most lathes, you just flip the position of the bottom gear and the spacer so the bottom gear moves from the inside to the outside. And as always, for more information, check the manual. The scratch pass is exactly the same when threading metric. Just like the inch thread, we turn the part to major diameter, add our die chem, take a scratch pass, and check that we cut the right thread pitch. The difference comes in how we go back to the beginning of the thread. Because we're cutting a metric thread on an inch lead screw, we cannot use the threading dial or disengage any part of the gear train from the time we start the scratch pass to when the threading operation is finished. That means we'll take a pass, back the tool off, run the motor in reverse to the beginning of the thread, and take every subsequent pass that way.
When threading in metric, we're never going to disengage the half nut from the time we start the thread to the time we're done. We need to reverse the motor back to the beginning every time. And sometimes people hear me say reverse back to the beginning of the thread and think I mean reverse the gearbox. That will get you out of the groove and ruin your thread. So none of that, please. You might also be tempted to speed up the spindle speed to get back to the start of the thread faster, then go back to the slower speed when you take another pass. Believe it or not, this can also throw you out of your threading groove and should be avoided. You can do it on a variable speed lathe, but geared head lathes should remain in the same gear throughout. So there you have it. With that information, you'll be able to get started single point threading metric and inch pitches. Tool selection, compound angle, and speeds and feeds are a whole separate video, but it all starts with getting your lathe to thread in the same groove every pass. As always, if you're having trouble or have any questions pertaining to a specific model of lathe, feel free to call or email and we'll help you out. Until next time, thanks for watching.